We'll be doing a, a quick example on a shunt motor. A shunt motor of 1500 RPM is given to you with 120 volt DC as the EA, which is the input current, with the load current of 50 volt amperes and field resistance as 120 ohms and with armature resistance as 0.1 ohms. We have to find the armature current IA, the back EMF EB, the mechanical power developed PM and the efficiency N. So first of all, how to do this question? So first we will find IA, IA is equals to, we know that IL minus IF uh, so, IF would be here, your VL by v, uh, VL by RF, that is VL, uh, VL which is the 120 volt is there by RF is also 120 ohm. So, IF I dot has 100 since switch current is very low, we can see in comparison to load current. So, I can find IA now. I is equal to we know that I L minus I shunt which is equal to 51 minus 1 so I got my first answer as I A is 50 amperes after that I need to find the E B I can find E B by E B is equal to E A uh, minus of I A R A drop so E B is equals to E A minus I A R A drop I A R A. So here E B and E B is uh, uh, back in up and your E A is the uh, the voltage we have applied. I A R A is known. I A is the magnetic current. R A is the resistance. I A we got. R A we know. E A also we know. So we can find E B. EA is 120 minus of IA is 50 into 0.1 that is 5. So I'll be getting uh, I EBS 115 volts. So I got the second answer also that is 115 volts. So now coming to the mechanical power of Pm. Pm is equals to Eb into uh, uh, Ia. So Pm before that, yes. So I can remove this thing right now. We know that uh, Pm is equals to Eb into Ia. We got the Eb. EV is 115 into your armature current I is 50. So PM is coming out as 5750 watts. 5750 watts. Now coming to this efficiency. For efficiency, I need to have the output which is I got upon the input into 100. But in this question, I am not having the input till now. I need to find the input now. What is the input to the machine? Input power actually, PA. So we know the formula PA is equal to EA into IA. EA is here is your 120 into IA is your again 50. And this is equivalent to 6120 watts. So I can keep, I can find the efficiency now, which is uh, the output upon input into 100. It implies my output is 5750 watt. My input is 6120 watts into 100. So I got the efficiency also. 
<coughs> now coming to another part which is called as the breaking since we have studied uh, uh, the things we have, that we have started the motor we have started the motor efficiently by using the starter after that we have uh, speed control of the motor also so after that when the speed control when i have need to have the braking of the motors braking is also important so we will be discussing the braking of dc motors We'll discuss the breaking of the motor. We'll be discussing it by a figure so that that will be very easy for us. So the base I will be having breaking of the DC motors will be first of all called as the posting. Second is called as the mechanical friction breaking. Third one is called as the dynamic braking. Fourth one is called as the plugging. And the Last one, fifth one is called as the regenerative brake. We'll be starting with the coasting. So before that, we will be seeing how a motor is. Uh, running. This is my motor through which I'll be using this in a here. This is my motor. Here the motor is also having the brushes. After these brushes the wiring will come wiring will be there and in this wiring if I am having my field like this and my field is having the field resistance as Rf here and battery is connected over here and it is giving flux this is EV it is connected to shaft is connected to the prime mover again and this is my prime mover and after that here my a switch is connected over in such a way that they become three different parts this is A, this is B, this becomes C, this is D Another becomes E, E and F. This is a double pole, double throw switch where AB is a double pole, double throw switch such that they are connected to C and D. So when this AB A is 
A and C are joined and B and D are joined. The motor was running as it should run. Now, when I have opened this switch A, B to C, D, now which is now the condition. Previously, this switch was like this way. The switch was connecting to this way, so the total circuit was complete and my, I was getting uh, a rotation over here, so this was getting rotated. So my time over was rotating at that moment. Sorry, my load was rotating at that moment. So when it is right, when I have removed this thing, I have just removed this thing. So what will happen since there is no free coil energized? So what will happen if I see the graph between uh, omega versus time means the speed with respect to time. I will see that there is a gradual decrease in the speed after a very long time. After a very long time uh, due to friction, uh, my motor will come to rest since my field coils are not energized. And uh, sorry, my armature is not having current. I field coils are energized right now. But after that, this this way of speed control, uh, sorry, braking is when when I am just removing the, uh, the circuit and leaving it with the flux there itself, with the flux only uh, uh, opening the armature circuit. So this is called as the coasting. The first graph which is I have seen is called the coasting. Coming to the mechanical friction way, in this way. Everything is done at the coasting. Apart from that, we apply a mechanical brakes here so that this is the flywheel. I can say if I apply the force from up to down so that there the energy here which was getting wasted automatically after some time due to friction of the bearings here and here also which was very less so it had taken a lot of time to come to rest but when I force it by uh, two brakes and the uh, my flywheel so there is a heat production in this brakes and the energy which was here stored is dissipated here in the flywheel much quickly as the coasting. So I will be getting a car like somewhat like this and my uh, system, the whole system, my machine will come to rest quickly. This is called the mechanical friction. These two parts are the way where I was doing something in the mechanical part to stop my uh, machine or the motor. This dynamic braking and plugging are the way from the electrical side. In the dynamic braking, what I do, I have since this. So this is there. So what I do here is since this is a double point double throw switch, I have taken it the previous in the previous way it was connected to A is connected to C and B is connected to D. I have taken out the switch and connected it to E and F where EF is connected to a very high other distance. This is R of very high value and I have connected now A to B and by B to F. So what I am doing right now rather than 
wasting my energy in the mechanical domain. In the previous one, in the mechanical friction breaking, what I did, I did, I have two uh, brakes which I was uh, pressing on the flywheel to have the energy of this motor and uh, that is lost in I square uh, R losses due to friction here. Now, sorry, I square losses not uh, due to friction losses, the uh, brakes will get uh, heated up. So, this heated brakes, the uh, energy is lost in the brakes as a heat. In the same way, rather than doing this thing, I can have the braking in the uh, electrical part also. So, I will put this A to E and B to F and I will connect this thing here towards the resistance. So, it will start behaving as a generator at that time and uh, uh, and the whatever with the potential energy is here, it will be wasted in this resistance as a uh, heat, I square R losses. So, this almost the same way I will be getting the uh, uh, dynamic braking graph also. I will be getting the same dynamic braking graph also. This is for posting. This is for dynamic braking as well as for my mechanical friction braking. So third point is also cleared now. So rather than wasting my power here, I have wasted that in the electrical domain itself in, a, in the form of a high resistance. Another way is that by which is called as the plugging. What is plugging? That we can have a different element rather than using this resistance, I can have a battery in just opposite direction. And if I put this A and B as uh, uh, to E and F after disconnecting it from C and D, what will happen? Since the battery connection has been reversed, so my motor is actually running in this direction right now with a very high speed. But now, due to battery, this battery, my negative flux will be get generated, and due to this negative flux, <coughs> the current in that armature will be uh, opposite to the previous one. Previous the current, if the current was flowing like this, now the current will try to. Uh, uh, flowing like uh, flowing this direction. So, my there is a counter force will start acting as soon as this double pole double throw switch is thrown to E and F. So, there is a opposite force coming into picture. So, my motor will quickly come to rest and if not, if when it is at the rest, if, if it is not uh, this, uh, this pole is not uh, taken back, it will try to come back in the reverse direction and it will start for uh, uh, the motor will start in the reverse direction. So, it is advisable uh, in plugging that when it comes to rest, that, that uh, this double pole double throw switch be open so that the motor will not run in the opposite direction. This is called plugging. This graph is called plugging. Another type is called as the regenerated braking. In the regenerated braking, what happened? We have doing this for all these things. But rather than since the motor is running from the supply, this motor is running from the supply, suppose from some other way, this is my EF. This motor is running, suppose, from a grid. This is a grid, suppose, if it is motor that is running from the grid. So, when I have taken, when this there was a E connected over here, when this was connected over here. And I am having a grid. 
sorry, uh, sorry for one thing that this motor is not running by a grid, this motor is running by my own self excitation here. So I, I was having a double pull, double throw switch as A and B, and I was having E and F connection which are connected to a grid now, a DC grid. So what I do, rather than wasting my energy anywhere, either in the uh, in the type of coasting, either in the mechanical friction, either in the dynamic braking, either in the plugging. This is the wastage of my energy actually. So to conserve the energy in my grid, what I will do, I will put my double pole, double throw switch towards here which is connected to a grid in the proper polarity and so the whatever energy is stored in my motor, it will go back to the grid and will be uh, uh, increasing the efficiency of my grid. So this is the way regenerative braking works. So this graph is also important uh, with respect to omega versus time. But this is the posting time. This is a uh, my dynamic braking as well as mechanical friction. This is my plugging. Plugging is the fastest way uh, among these three, uh, among these four exactly. So plugging, then dynamic braking and friction braking are almost same. Posting it takes a lot of time. And regenerative braking uh, is also taking a lot of time because uh, because that since no direct friction is there, so whatever is the friction of the uh, this bearings and here, so that will be and the energy is directly going back to the grid. So it is almost in between coasting and this. <laughs>